Today's video is brought to you by Slide Belts, creators of high quality belts featuring unique ratcheting buckles. Not only do they make my personal favorite belt, the survival belt, but they're also longtime viewers of the channel. I've personally used slide belts for some time now and honestly, they make a fantastic product. It also makes a great gift since you can buy one size and trim it to fit. Be sure to stick around to the end of the video for a special discount code for my viewers, redeemable at slidebelts.com. He's the unassuming hobbit at the heart of the Lord of the Rings. From humble gardener to trusted companion to ring bearer, his simple courage and heart would lead Tolkien himself to call him the story's chief hero. Today on Nerd of the Rings, we cover the life and travels of Samwise Gamgee. Sam is one of six children born to Hamfast Gamgee and Belle Goodchild. His siblings being Hamson, Halfred, Daisy, May, and Marigold. He is born on April 6th, 2980 of the Third Age. Sam grew up learning his father's trade of gardening. Hamfast, better known as Gaffer, would take Sam to help him tend the garden of Bilbo's home of Bag End. In addition to gardening from the Gaffer, Sam learned rope making from his grandfather and his uncle. And from Bilbo Baggins, he learned his letters. Bilbo was also responsible for passing on his love of elves, poetry, and an interest in the wider world. Years after Bilbo's disappearance, Sam notices the wizard Gandalf visiting Frodo at Bag End. Among Frodo's friends, Mary Adoc Brandybuck organizes a group of conspirators to keep an eye on Frodo with his ring and his discussions with Gandalf. Sam, who is called their chief investigator, is tasked with eavesdropping on their conversations. Sam overhears the discussion of the ring being the one ring of Sauron on April 13, 3018 and is discovered by Gandalf. Sam, who initially says he was simply curious of the conversation and distraught by the idea of Frodo having to leave the Shire, asks to be taken to see the elves. Gandalf chooses Samwise as Frodo's first companion on his journey to Bree. On September 23rd, Frodo, Sam, and Pippin leave Bag End, heading toward Frodo's new home in Crick Hollow. On their way, they have close calls with the Black Riders, and on September 24th, one of the Nazgul flees at the sound of elves. That night, Samwise gets his wish to meet the elves as they camp with Gildor and his company. The following day, Sam awakens, feeling changed, feeling that he has a role to fulfill that lies beyond the Shire. That day, they come to the home of Farmer Maggot, who gives them transport to Buckleberry Ferry, where they meet Mary. They travel on to Frodo's home at Crick Hollow, where Frodo reveals his plans to Merry, Pippin, and Fatty Bulger. However, thanks in part to Sam, the plan is already known, and Merry and Pippin resolve to accompany Frodo, while Fatty remains behind to keep up appearances in the Crick Hollow home. As they make their way for Bree, they opt to traverse the old forest. And here we see one of the first instances of Sam's resourcefulness. As Merry and Pippin are taken by the roots of Old Man Willow, and he tries to drown Frodo, Sam saves Frodo from the river and thinks to start a fire to strike back at Old Man Willow. In the end, they are saved by Tom Bombadil. After staying for two nights in the home of Tom and Goldberry, they make their way through the Barrow Downs, where they are captured by a Barrow White. Once again, they are rescued by Tom Bombadil and make their way to Bree. There they meet Strider, of whom Sam is very mistrustful. That night, Sauron's servants let all the Hobbit's ponies loose from the stables, leaving them to purchase a single pony from Bill Fernie. The animal, in rather rough shape, is loved and taken care of by Sam, who names him Bill after his former owner. They make their way to Weathertop, where they are attacked by the Nazgul, and onward to Rivendell. Sam spends much of his early time in Rivendell sitting by Frodo's bedside as he recovers from the Morgul wound. In Rivendell, Sam once again eavesdrops, this time with greater success on the Council of Elrond, where he insists that he will accompany Frodo on the quest to Mount Doom. Merry and Pippin would later be appointed by Elrond at the behest of Gandalf, completing the Group of Nine. The Fellowship departs in Ladris on December 25th, 3018, and in addition to the Nine Companions, Sam brings along Bill, 
The pony would travel with Sam throughout the former realm of Oregion, the failed attempt to pass Karathras, and the night raid by Wargs. However, it was decided, much to Sam's distress, that Bill should not attempt the passage of Moria. Thus, the pony is set loose, left to find his way back on safe roads. When Frodo is attacked by the Watcher in the water, it is Sam who slashes at the arm holding him, causing the monster to release the ring bearer. For the next two days, the Fellowship traverses the mines of Moria, coming to the chamber of Mazar Bull on January 15th. In the skirmish that follows, Sam kills his first orc, and in the process receives a scratch along his scalp. In their escape, Gandalf falls at the bridge of Khazad Dûm, and the Fellowship is led by Aragorn to the elven realm of Lorien. Sam tags along with Frodo when called to the Mirror of Galadriel, and looking in, he sees a vision of trees being felled in the Shire, and Ted Sandyman's mill being replaced by a brick building. Sam briefly considers going back to help those remaining in the Shire, but after Galadriel reminds him that it can be treacherous to allow the mirror to make his decisions for him, Sam resolves to see it through with Frodo. As the Fellowship leaves Lorien on February 16th, Galadriel's unique gift for Sam is a small box, with a silver G rune for Galadriel. Inside was soil from Galadriel's orchard, and a single silver nut from a Malorn tree, the last east of the sea and west of the mountains. Sam travels with the company down the river Anduin until the breaking of the Fellowship on February 26th. Despite being unable to swim, he leaps into the water in order to go with Frodo. They enter into the Emin Muil, making their way toward Mordor. It is here that they encounter and join with Gollum. Sam remains distrustful of the wretched creature throughout their travels, nicknaming his two personalities Slinker and Stinker. On March 1st, they begin their passage of the Dead Marshes, and three days later they approach the Slag Mountains on the edge of the desolation of the Moranon. Unable to enter through the Black Gate, Gollum makes to lead them through Ithilien. Sam, who unlike Frodo still had the return journey in mind, is concerned about their dwindling food supply, and on March 7th, he decides to risk a small fire with which to stew rabbit. He accidentally allows it to smoke, which draws the attention of a group of Athelian rangers. Frodo and Sam witness a skirmish between the rangers and a group of Haradrim making their way to Mordor, during which they see an Oliphant. It is here that at the sight of a dead Haradrim soldier, Sam wonders if the fallen warrior was truly evil at heart, a topic covered in greater detail in my Haradrim video. Faramir and his rangers take the hobbits to Heneth Anun, the window on the west, where Sam accidentally reveals the secret of their quest. However, Faramir, unlike in the films, lets the hobbits go, rejecting any allure of the ring. Sam compliments the captain of Gondor, saying his quality is the very highest, and that he reminded him of Gandalf. Gollum leads Frodo and Sam into Mordor via the Morgul Vale taking the stairs of Kirith Ungol. It is there that Gollum's treachery is revealed, for he had betrayed them to Shelob. Frodo is bitten by the monstrous spider, but before she can make off with her prey, Sam comes to his master's rescue, piercing her flesh with sting and driving her away. Believing Frodo to be dead, Sam takes the ring, resolving to finish the quest alone. Orcs from the nearby tower of Kirith Ungol discover Frodo's body, and their conversation reveals to Sam that his master isn't dead. Sam makes his way into the tower, where orcs of Minas Morgul fight with those of Kirith Ungol over Frodo's mithril shirt. Unable to locate Frodo and feeling defeated, Sam bows his head, and to his own surprise, begins singing one of my personal favorite songs from Tolkien's world. In western lands beneath the sun, the flowers may rise in spring. The trees may bud, the waters run, the merry finches sing. Or there may be tis cloudless night, and swaying beeches bare, the elven stars as jewels white amid their branching hair. Though here at journey's end I lie, in darkness buried deep, beyond all towers strong and high, 
beyond all mountains steep. Above all shadows rides the sun, and stars forever dwell. I will not say the day is done, nor bid the stars farewell. After his rescue of Frodo, Sam returns the ring and accompanies him to Mount Doom. In one of his most heroic moments, realizing his master can go on no longer, Sam carries Frodo part of the way up the volcanic mountain. When they are attacked by Gollum, Sam, who had never trusted the wretched creature, spares his life, for he had now experienced what it was like to be a ring bearer. This would prove a pivotal moment as it is Gollum's taking the ring from Frodo, which leads to him slipping at the cracks of doom and the destruction of the One Ring. Frodo and Sam are rescued by the Great Eagles and taken to the field of Cormalin, where on April 8th, they are honored by Aragorn as they celebrate their victory over Sauron. They return to Gondor where they witness the coronation of King Aragorn Elisar and his wedding to Arwen Undomiel. After stops in Rohan, Isengard, and Rivendell, they return to Bree, meeting Barlam and Butterbur once again. There it is discovered that Bill the Pony had returned to the Prancing Pony and is reunited with Sam once more. Sam would then take part in the liberation of the Shire from Saruman's ruffians in the Battle of Bywater, realizing that what he had seen in Galadriel's mirror had indeed come to pass. However, Unlike Saruman had predicted, the Shire would not remain destroyed for their lifetimes. Sam places a grain of Galadriel soil at the root of each sapling he planted where beautiful and beloved trees once stood. The party tree, where Bilbo had given his farewell speech all those years before, had been cut down during the scouring. In its place, Sam plants the small silver nut and a great Malorn tree grows in its place. On May 1st, 3020, Sam marries Rosie Cotton, and they would go on to have 13 children. Eleanor, Frodo, Rose, Mary, Pippin, Goldilocks, Hamfast, Daisy, Primrose, Bilbo, Ruby, Robin, and Tolman. In honor of his restoration of the Shire using the Lorien soil, the family of Samwise is given the name Gardener. When Frodo sails into the west on the white ship with the other ring bearers, Sam inherits Bag End and is given the Red Book of Westmarch, in which the adventures featured in The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings were recorded. Six years later, Sam is elected mayor of the Shire for the first time. He would go on to serve seven consecutive seven-year terms. King Elisar visits the Northern Kingdom in the 15th year of the Fourth Age, meeting Sam, Merry, and Pippin at the Brandywine Bridge. There, Aragorn gives Sam a badge of honor called the Star of the Dúnedain and makes his position of mayor an official counselor of the North Kingdom. His daughter, Eleanor, is also made a maid of honor to Queen Arwen. Six years later, Sam, Rosie, and Eleanor travel to Gondor, where they spend a year as guests of Aragorn and Arwen. They would return to the Shire and live out the rest of Rosie's life together. When Rosie dies in 61 of the Fourth Age, Sam leaves Bag End on September 22nd, Bilbo and Frodo's birthday, and makes his way to the Tower Hills. There he gives Eleanor the Red Book and goes on to the Grey Havens. From there he would sail across the sea, the last of the bearers of the One Ring to make the great journey where he would live out his remaining days with his friend, Frodo Baggins. Now being resourceful is why I love the survival belt from Slide Belts. Not only does this belt feature an LED flashlight for dark moments, but also a stainless steel knife, a fire starter, and a bottle opener, combined with the convenience of Slide Belt's ratcheting buckle. And right now you can save 20% off your order just by using the code Nerd of the Rings. For some of the best belts you'll ever find, go to slidebelts.com. As always, I want to say a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters who make this channel possible. Tom DeBombadil19, Listen Me the Cinda, Mandu Pandu, Andrew Carlisle, The Mighty Mim, Team Weasel, Rabbi Rob Thomas, Sky Carcass, Slide Belts, Dane Ragnarsson, Salim Rahman, Zetrock, Berto Berg, Grand Strategy Nerd, Graham Derricott, 
the dark-haired one, Wyland, Michael Wu, and Debbie. If you enjoyed the artwork in this video, check out the artists in the description and purchase prints of their great work for yourself. Thanks so much for watching and subscribing, and we'll see you next time on Nerd of the Rings.